As Dalhousie University enters its third century, we continue to be committed to fostering sustainability across campus, both in infrastructure and learning. The Innovation and Design and Engineering and Architecture, or IDEA project, amplifies this commitment. It includes major renovations to a number of existing buildings, outdoor improvements, and the construction of two new buildings, the Amera IDEA Building and the Design Building. During the construction and the life of these new buildings, we've committed to green-focused practices in the area of renewable energy, waste, water, natural and urban environments, living buildings, and transportation. The Amera IDEA and Design Buildings are both lead candidate buildings targeting a gold certification, with a stretch goal targeting platinum certification. If the latter is achieved, it would be a first for Dalhousie. Here are some of the things we are doing to get there. Within Sexton Field, we have 60 boreholes drilled 150 meters deep underground. Those are spaced on approximately 20 foot spacing. We circulate an antifreeze fluid through those and that fluid comes inside the building into what we call a header beside me. So all that piping combines together in one spot and then we can send it over to the heating and cooling system from there. We want to use the ground as a source of heating and cooling. Underground, it's warmer in the winter than the outdoor air temperature, and it's cooler in the summer, so then it makes the system more efficient being able to use a, a source that's more moderate throughout the year. Up on the roof of the new IDEA building here at Saxon Campus, we have a 150 kilowatt solar photovoltaic array. And 150 kilowatts is a lot of power. It's equal to more than 100 houses operating on a general daily basis. What we're doing here is we're adding solar to the roof, which generates electricity to offset some of our electricity needs. But it doesn't offset our peak electricity demands, or it might be a cloudy day. And so we've added battery energy storage. And what that does is it charges and discharges to mitigate those peaks. By peak shaving, we avoid some electricity costs that are passed on to us from the utility for those peak demands. The main corridor is connecting these two streets with more pedestrian as well as the bike facilities. So we are trying to sense pedestrian movement as well as bicyclist movement. And this will give enormous uh, wealth of data for the students to work with. We're using permeable pavers to create a hard surface that's just like a regular concrete paver that you see in plazas all over the city, but they have bigger gaps in between, so that allows stormwater to infiltrate through the paving material and into a gravel base below. And that's really important because as we see more and more extreme weather events, it's really difficult on the city's infrastructure to be able to handle those increased volumes of rainfall. So we have started this project in the IDEA building where we're collecting rainwater and our objective is to look at how we can treat the water differently and perhaps in a more efficient way. The water is collected on the roof of the building and then it's drawn down into a large cistern and then it's taken from that cistern into a treatment system and then distributed into the building where it's used for non-potable water. In some respects, it's almost like a man-made lake, if you will. So the cistern is, is parallels that, except there's no aquatic species, there's no fish and there's no trees. So it won't have the same type of chemistry that our, our lakes would. And so part of our research question is what level of treatment is appropriate and what would be appropriate to have minimal energy inputs, what would be appropriate for minimal operational inputs, and still have safety for the people who are using the water. For creating a living and active building, we're putting a many meters inside the building. The meters will be on electrical system, so the whole lighting system will have its own meter, the HVAC system, our PVs, the rainwater system, then they'll be integrated into a, a dashboard and then we can monitor the systems, do research with researchers on campus. So it's quite exciting. It's the most monitoring we've had in any building and it becomes a living building in the sense that we can see how it's a performing just like a body. If we can monitor and measure it, we can see if it's going off track or not. We can do research to optimize systems. We can do predictive building controls where we look at weather forecasting and then actually adjust building systems based on future weather forecasts. 
We have a unique biomass replacement guideline where if we take down a tree, we have to replace it with the same amount of biomass. We took down 17 trees and we planted over 170 native and adapted species across all our campuses. The purpose is to really ensure that we don't take a lot of the trees down that we have, which is really important for not only pollinators but birds, but in terms of people, uh, shading and cooling, climate change, wind breaks. So trees play a really important role in the ecosystem and especially as we urbanize, it's really more important that we pay attention to planting. As citizens of the world, we are committed to constructing, working, and learning in buildings that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, waste, and water and energy usage. The benefit of these practices go beyond reducing our impact on the environment. Learning from, and not simply in, the buildings on our campus will strengthen our ability to be leaders in this innovative field. It starts here.